Hey, what's up? Andrew Kramer here for videocopilot.net. And today we're gonna to take a look at rigging this police vehicle. So it's gonna be a lot of fun. We're gonna be taking a look at uh, animating the car wheels, giving it a little bit of rotation. And uh, let's take a look at the uh, final uh, video here. So pretty cool, you know, you've got this police vehicle, but the best part is that everyone in the background is just frozen. Because in New York they have this uh, stop and search thing, and so people just kind of mind their own business when the police are around. Maybe. Now, if we look closely, we can see that the wheels are rotating. We can see we have a little bit of suspension on the chassis, and uh, we even got a shadow and some lights that uh, we built. So let's take a look at setting this up, but first, we need to import our models from 3D Max or from Cinema 4D to work with Element 3D. Let's go and take a look at exporting our vehicle for Element 3D. Now, we want to be able to have control over the individual objects such as the wheels so that we can make them spin. Now, we also want to be able to have control over the chassis. What we need to do is first separate them by mesh. So you can do that usually just by selecting your object, going into the edit mode, and you can select parts of your object and detach them. And I know it works similarly in Cinema 4D. You can disconnect certain parts of your model. You wanna make sure to detach all four wheels and the chassis as separate objects. Now, this particular model only has a single material. It's the car material with the texture. But in order for Element to understand the separate pieces, we need to assign a separate material to each area. All right, so after we detach the wheels and the chassis, we can apply separate materials. So what I'll do is I'll take the front wheel, apply this yellow material, take the back wheels, use the red material, and the chassis, we could do a blue material and all of the areas that we want to include, such as the doors. And then as far as the windows, we also want to use a separate material so that we can lower the opacity of that window. And if you want also the front glass of the headlights, we can make a separate material if we want to control it, but it's not necessary. Now, we're not going to use these materials, but it allows Element to register the different areas of the vehicle. And this will actually allow Element to isolate those particular areas. So for example, I can shut the front wheels off here, or I can shut the back wheels off here, which will allow us to control them individually on separate groups, but I'll get into that in a moment. So then what you'll do is take that object, and then we'll choose export, export selected, and we're gonna export an OBJ file, and uh, we'll just call this uh, SUVB, and we'll save it, we'll make sure we set it to triangles, and uh, choose export. Now, if you're using Cinema 4D, it'll work the same way. You want to go ahead and take your object, separate it by pieces, set specific materials for each of the objects, and then uh, go ahead and save that as a Cinema 4D file. Okay, so this is what we want to set up. All right, let's go and take a look at what's happening here. So what I'm going to do is just take the camera tool, and I'm going to zoom in here, and uh, we're using Element 3D, so obviously we've got some good performance. And we'll notice that the wheels are actually rotating and then they stop as the car comes to a stop. Now, the front wheels also rotate as if it's making a turn and the back wheels are actually staying straight. And then we also have the chassis that's also sort of bouncing from the suspension. So what we wanna do is have three separate groups, one for the front wheels, one for the back wheels, and one for the chassis. So. Let's go and set this up. I'm gonna come into a comp that just has some lights and a background. We're gonna create a new solid for Element 3D. And uh, we're gonna choose uh, Element. Drop that onto the solid. And load up the scene setup. We'll come over here to import our SUV. And it's gonna come in with all of the separate materials, but without texture. So what we wanna do is set up those textures individually. So we'll go to the vehicle, open up our texture map folder, and in this case I have the uh, exterior texture map here. 
And some models are going to be perfectly unwrapped like this, some are not. So depending on the complexity of your model, you just want to go ahead and rebuild them. So the diffuse is going to go on to the diffuse slot. Once we set up the one material, we can actually take that same material and drop it onto the other channels like the front wheels and the rear wheels since it pretty much uses the same material. Then we could come back over here, drop the specular map slot and uh, maybe turn up our reflectivity, um, change our environment map to match the uh, scene a little bit better. So I happen to have this one pano that has some city buildings that kind of works pretty well. And, uh, you know, in the higher resolution of the panel that you use, so this is 6K by 3K, the higher resolution, the more ray traced it will look on the reflection map. So that's kind of a good thing. Now for our glass, we can uh, maybe set the diffuse color to black and we'll come down here, turn up the reflectivity a bit. You know, we could even just leave it that way, but we can also lower the opacity if we wanted. And then we have the headlight covers which we can also uh, change to black and maybe turn up the reflectivity and maybe some refractivity a little bit and then lower the force opacity so that'll just kind of give us a little bit of see-throughness. Now of course future video copilot vehicle packs will be pre-set up with all the textures and materials so you won't have to do any of this. Now another good thing to do is to clean up your scene materials and just click remove unused materials so that way you know missing textures won't be a problem you know or something like that in the future so now we've got our model in and what we want to do is set this up to be rigged so what we're going to do is shut the wheels off okay then we're going to duplicate the model and then we're going to turn the front wheels off so we're going to turn everything else off but the front wheels which are here and put that onto group two then we're going to duplicate it again and turn on just the back wheels and set it to group three and only group three. By the way, if you hold down alt, when you click on a group, it'll swap the channel. Now for this particular setup, we want to make sure that we leave the anchor point to the center of the object because we want the wheels to rotate around their center point. I'm going to hit OK. All right, so we've got our vehicle here and everything looks intact. However, the way the rig is going to work is we're going to go into group two, go down to the particle look, and enable multi-object. So we'll turn that on. And what this will allow us to do is control the rotation for the specific pieces. So check this out. We can rotate left and right. And if we come underneath the vehicle, you can see that is rotating individually around the center axis. So it's different than actually rotating the entire particle, which will move everything together. So the multi-object, just like fracturing a ball or something, is going to rotate the individual pieces on their own center axis. So this is going to give us some nice control for our wheels. Now, here's the important thing, though. We want the wheels to rotate forward, right? So we're cruising along, but we also want them to rotate left and right. So unfortunately, the order of the rotation by standard may mess this up. So what you want to do is find the rotation for forward and animate it. So in this case, we'll just set a keyframe, hit U, and uh, move forward and then rotate this a lot. You know, we can set up some expressions to do this, you know, more accurately, but the idea is to just get it to start rotating and then adjust the turn rotation. So this is going to be messed up. This is like some crazy futuristic car. And uh, we just want it to turn as if the car steering is turning. So we've added this feature called rotation order. And what this will allow you to do is switch it. So I'm not sure which one it is here for every case, depending on the orientation of your model. But for this one, it's actually Y, X, Z. So check this out. We can rotate left and right and the wheels will still rotate forward. So that is pretty much the idea. So what we'll do is we'll set these back to zero. Um, you know, we can, you know, add some rotation. And remember, this is all 3D, so if we turn on the motion blur, we're gonna see real 3D motion blur as these wheels spin, and, uh, you know, it looks really nice. So we'll shut the motion blur off just so we can work a little faster here, but uh, very responsive. Now, the other thing we wanna do is set up the back wheels. So the back wheels are going to be a little easier to set up and we can actually just come in here 
and open up group three, go to the particle look, enable multi-object, and then we're just going to rotate the X value, which is going to rotate the wheels forward. Now, depending on the car you have, you may have rear differential. No, I'm just kidding. Um, what we're going to do is just link these two values together. So we can obviously rotate them and control them separately, or we can just Alt-click on the rotation here, and then pick whip the X rotation for group two. And you'll notice that all the parameters for group two have a two in front of them, and all the parameters for group three have a three in front of them. So it's a little bit easier to see inside of your comp. So check this out. We've got our wheels spinning and uh, we're looking good. All right, so this is pretty much the basic idea. Now, just to make it a little bit easier to control, let's say we want to move the entire vehicle rig together. Well, one way we could do it is using the world transform. So if we move this around, you can see I'm moving the entire vehicle. The wheels are still spinning. We can even rotate it. And uh, that's a really good method. Another way to do it is to set up group nulls. So we can go into group one, create a null, and what that will do is create a null in the middle of that particular object. So see we can have the car null. But if I move this around, it's only gonna move the group one. So what I wanna do is create a group null for group two. So we'll come down to group two, create a group null, close that, come down to group three, create a group null. So then if we take the two top nulls, so we could say this null is the front wheels, and this null is the back wheels, and this null is the car. Then we can take these two layers, parent it to the car layer, and now the car is moving everything around. So not only can we rotate this around, but we have control over it. It works, uh, works really, really well. So I could take the car null, hit P, we could keyframe the position of the, uh, you know, the body of this, so we could back it up here, and uh, you know, have it come and come to a stop. We could, you know, give it a nice little slowdown. And so let's just take a look at this actually, just for one second. So we've got the wheels, you know, stopping and the car stopping. So this looks pretty abrupt. So what we might do is go into group one, go into the particle look and play around with the rotation. So check this out. I can rotate the chassis individually. So for example, as it comes to a stop, we might animate the, you know, chassis sliding forward as if the brakes were being applied and then loosening up. So we'll come down here, we've got our keyframes here. And all these uh, are just the expressions for the nulls. But you can see here, check it out. You know, this is kind of abrupt. You might start seeing this happen a little sooner as the brakes get slammed on and then the suspension loosens up. If you hit F9 on the keyframe or just do easy ease, it'll be a little softer. You know, and then have it maybe pop up and then maybe, you know, it goes up above and then maybe back down. So here's just kind of like a bobbing motion. And if we look at the track view, you can kind of see what this looks like. So this maybe is a little bit too much. Maybe we delete the one, smooth this out a bit. It's like we want this to, to be a large stop and then a slower one, you know, that doesn't make that big of a bump. You know, maybe this will not even have to be that intense. And then smooth this out. So you can see here, this is the big bump, and then slowly settles. So let's take a look. Now, we would probably see this probably sooner. So we might stretch it out and, and slide it over. So just as someone slams on the brake, you know, the the front of the vehicle is going to go down as it comes to a stop. We can even play around with the position null. So maybe we want the car to stop a little bit more smoother. We can go into the curve, tweak that value a little bit. Now real quick, I'm going to show you how I did just the shadow for the car. Basically, Let's just create a new black solid, make it a 3D layer, and then we'll just kind of lay it flat. Let's see here, rotate it flat, and then go to the bottom view of the camera. So we'll go to the bottom, and then we just want to create, let me just move the black solid near the vehicle and then shut the switch off. 
Then we'll take the pen tool, we'll draw our shadow shape here. And uh, the other thing we'll do is actually we'll make little contact points for the wheels. So we'll do one for the back wheel here. So this will be our shadow. So what we'll do is we'll go back to our active camera and let's make sure that this is down on the wheel level. So what we'll do is we'll go to the front view real quick and let's just move our shadow down. And then we'll go back to the active view and then we'll put our shadow below our car and let's move our car down here above our background. And we can also move our nulls. I like to put my nulls right above the layer that they're related to, so it keeps things a little bit more organized. Um, but we've got our shadow layer right here. We'll hit F and we can feather it out. And so then we have our contact shadows. Let's take those, select them, and then feather it out just a little bit hide the masks to kind of see what that's doing. So we're just feathering it out a little bit. And then we have our main shadow, which we can also hit MM, and we can change the expansion of that first one. So we can tighten it in or, you know, switch it out depending on how our shadow should look. Then we want to take our shadow and parent it to the car null so that when the car moves, the shadow is going to move with it. And then, of course, we can go in and, you know, tweak the look of the shadow so we might tighten up these contact points so that they're just right around where the uh, car shadow is. Looks pretty good. And then the other thing we had in the original example was just some lights, you know, coming off the headlights. And I pretty much just did the same thing. I just used um, these gold layers here. And then you can see like a little streak that I did with another just layer kind of animated it on as the car comes to a stop. Okay, and then just some final tweaks. You know, we can do some things like turn on some ambient occlusion in the render setting. So if we turn this on, crank up the intensity a bit, we'll just create a little bit of shading around, uh, around the vehicle parts. Tweak that a bit. And then we can also add some color correction. So, you know, we want to just give it a little more contrast, make it pop a little bit more. And then also in the output settings, we have the multi-pass mixer. So we can do things like turn up the reflection amount just to kind of match our scene. So if we are trying to match our New York plate, you know, we might tweak, you know, tweak the reflection intensity amount. We might even do things like go into the environment and rotate the reflection and map. So, you know, we've got buildings over here on our left and we might take this environment map, rotate it so that we can start to see some of those buildings, uh, you know, in our reflection. So just making tweaks and things like that to kind of match the reflectivity and the, and the look of the scene around your CG. So just all of those kinds of things, uh, you know, help to make your shot more believable. And that goes for things like shadows, like trying to match the shadow to the look of the shadows around it, you know, the color of the shadow. Hopefully this tutorial has been useful. Uh, you notice at the end here we've got a little bit of a dust element that pops up behind the car. And uh, that's actually just an element from uh, Action Essentials 2. So that's dust wave number two. You can kind of see just kind of a nice element uh, to throw behind uh, the car as it stops. So, all right. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed the tutorial. And uh, hopefully this will help you kind of understand some different ideas of integrating your 3D objects with Element 3D. My name is Andrew Kramer, and we will see you next time.